I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're going to learn something today. Today, we're going to diagnose a hot motor that is also causing desyncs. Uh, and to, you're only going to be looking at the bench today. No, no beautiful headshot of my face because uh, a walnut tree in a big storm fell on the power line leading to my house, and I'm completely out of power and have been for over a day now. So we're just shooting off of this little lamp on my bench, uh, and you hopefully the knowledge will be worth not being able to see my beautiful face. <laughs> This is the Legero, the four inch quadcopter from Avant Quads. I do have a review of this quadcopter coming up. It's pretty freaking good, uh, but that's not what we're here to talk about today. Today, we're gonna tr troubleshoot a hot motor. When I first started flying this quad, I checked the motor temperatures. I always check the motor temperatures on a new quadcopter. I don't know, I just never quite 100% trust other people's tunes. And so every time when I pick the quadcopter up after the first few flights, I just feel the motors. It's not, I just absent-mindedly. And sure enough, one of these motors was hotter than the other three. Now that alone is suspicious. It's pretty normal for the back motors of a quad to be hotter than the front motors. That's not abnormal. And the reason for that is that when the quad is in forward flight, there is the aerodynamic forces. I think it's because the front motors are getting clean incoming air. The rear motors are seeing dirty air from the front motors. And so the rear motors have to spin faster to create the same amount of lift or thrust. That's my theory as to why it happens, but I don't really fully know. The bottom line is that the rear motors of a quadcopter are usually spinning faster, working harder than the front motors. And so as a result, they'll usually come down a little warmer. But this guy was much hotter. Another question that people ask me is, what's the difference between, how do you know if a motor is hot exactly? Where's the line between like warm and hot? And I say that if you pinch the motor in your fingers and just hold your fingers on the motor and you can just hold them there, then it's only warm, it's not hot. On the other hand, if you pinch them and as you hold it, you kind of want to take your fingers off, ah, that's too hot, that, that's hot, right? You really, I think you just know the difference. So uh, yeah, so warm motors are normal, hot motors are abnormal. And usually in my experience, there's not really a, a, a divide, a fine line there. Either a motor is, yeah, it's kind of warm, it's okay. Or, wow, oh, it's hot. You know, the things that make a motor hot tend to make it really super hot. So this motor was super hot. And then after I flew for a little while longer, it started to desync and the cup would drop out of the sky. And I knew it was this motor, well, because this motor was hot, but also because every time the copter fell out of the sky, it would roll toward that motor. This motor loses thrust, it desyncs, whatever you want to call it, and it rolls that direction. There you go. It's worth mentioning that, that, that other things can make motors hot. For example, if you overprop the motors, they're going to get hot. Uh, typically, they will just gradually get warmer and warmer and warmer, and they won't like just suddenly get dramatically super hot. The other thing is if the motors are overpropped, by which I mean you're using too big of a prop, too heavy of a prop. These are, these are, these are really surprisingly powerful motors for their size, but if I was to go stick a 5-inch uh, tri-blade bullnose on here, it's just too much prop for them and they're going to get really hot. But then all four motors would get hot, right? The other thing is that if you have not enough filtering or too much degain, your motors will get hot. And But again, again, typically all four motors will tend to get hot, not just one back left motor. There was a final clue, though, that tipped me off to what the problem was with this motor. And that was that sometimes when I would pick the quad up after flying, I would feel there was a real hot spot on the frame. And that's a dead giveaway. Anytime you feel a hot spot on the frame, and again, I don't just mean like, this one was not like burn your finger hot, but it was like really way hotter than you. Like sometimes you pick the quad up and right underneath where the ESC has been, oh, that feels a little warm. But this was like, oh, that's why is that one spot right there so uh, unexpectedly hot? And the answer is because electricity is moving through it. This frame is carbon fiber and it is conductive. Uh, we could prove that to ourselves by using our multimeter. We put our multimeter in continuity mode. And if we check the edge, we can see, sure enough, it's, it's uh, conductive. Now we, we wouldn't see that if we touch the top because the top has a kind of a, I don't know if it's enamel or whatever kind of coating, the same thing they use to make the carbon fiber carbon. And it actually protects against electrical conductivity until you scrape at it for a while. But it's conductive and it's carrying electricity, but it's not very conductive. And so it heats up anywhere there's a little bit of resistance. So that tells us that electricity is flowing through the frame. And how is that happening? Where's the electricity coming from? Well, 
If you have a positive wire somewhere that's frayed, like your battery wire is frayed and it's touching, well, you're gonna get some current flow there, but that's not what's happening here. The number one place I check when I've got a, a hot frame and a hot motor is I check the motor screws. All right, the motor screws may be making contact with the windings. I won't be able to show you the windings. They're up in there though. And it is a, a kind of, well, it's, an, it's called enamel wire. It's copper wire coated with enamel instead of plastic insulation. And if they make contact with it, then you'll get some current flowing from the motor through the frame and to the, 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 the ground here. And that is 99% of the time what's happening when you have the situation I've described here. But here's how you can test it. Multimeter in continuity mode. Okay. And we're gonna pick a good motor, a non-suspect motor. We're gonna put the probe on one of the screws and then we're going to touch one of the three motor wires one two three and you don't want to hear anything and it actually doesn't matter which motor wire you touch because inside the motor the windings are all connected together so if we check the individual motor wires we should see they have continuity to each other if they don't have continuity to each other, then the motor is damaged. So you really don't need to check all three of the motor wires. It doesn't matter which screw you check on any of the four motors because all of the screws have continuity to each other through the frame. So if we check here, you can see the screws will always have continuity to each other through the frame. So it actually doesn't matter. What matters is, it doesn't matter which screw you test. What matters is which of these motor headers indicates continuity and that's the motor that has the problem well, of course the one that's getting super hot has the problem too so let's just check anywhere on the frame really it doesn't even have to be we'll just check the edge of the frame it doesn't even have to be one of the uh, screws but I'll check the edge of the frame here and no continuity here no continuity to this ESC none to this ESC, those are all fine. And that motor, that's, that motor has continuity to the frame. Therefore, that, that's just a problem. And the number one place for that to be happening is here in the screws. So what let's do is let's just back those screws out a smidge and see which one has the problem. And I'm gonna reckon that it's the one, oh well, yeah, I really honestly don't know. I'm just going to back one of them out a few turns and we'll check again for continuity. Really, I'm going to just use anywhere that's convenient. Any of the screws should work. They all, the frame doesn't matter. Bingo. This is the screw that had the problem because we backed it out and the problem went away. And if you look, you can see that that is the screw that's closest to where the wires enter the motor. See these back ones I just visually inspected, and they have plenty of clearance between them and the winding. You can absolutely see that they're not touching. But this, oops, sorry about that. This screw here is close to where the windings enter the motor, or the, the motor wires enter, and my guess is it's making contact somewhere there. So, so then, what do we do next? Well, I certainly could just back that out a little bit, and try to go fly, but no, 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 don't do that. Don't, don't short circuit yourself, short change yourself. This motor has been overheated so many times, it's begun desyncing, copper's fallen out of the sky. We're gonna replace this motor and we're gonna make sure that we have no continuity between any of the ESC wires, the motor wires, and the frame. And that's a basic check that's good to do anytime you're building a copter. Uh, I, I don't do it on absolutely every build. On many of the builds I do, there's just the motors are big enough that it's just really clear that if you use a small enough screw, you're not going to touch. You can just visually inspect. But it's not a bad idea, especially when you're working on smaller motors like these Brother Hobby motors, uh, to do it just a test and make sure you do not have any continuity between the motor uh, outputs on the ESC and the frame or the screws, wherever you find convenient. Well, that's going to do it for this video. I hope it's been educational, and as always, happy flying.